This is the second in my video series in which we re-examine the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. As you already know, previously we used these very pictures to prove that the mysterious halo supposedly caused by Apollo 15's Lunar Module Descent Engine Plume is, in fact, impact craters that were already there long before the vehicle supposedly landed. In addition to the photos, there are various other oddities concerning the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. In addition to the high-resolution camera used to take these pictures, LRO also carries an instrument known as Lunar Orbiter Laser Out Emitter, or LOLA. Basically, it fires a laser repeatedly which bounces off the lunar surface and back at LRO thus allowing the satellite to make a 3D topographic map by measuring the time it takes for the laser pulses to return. Hold on a second. I thought you needed a retro reflector to do that. With the laser pointed at a random location on the moon's surface, Initiating laser. Dr. McMillan pulses 200 quadrillion photons into the night sky. So we're shining the laser on the lunar highlands now, and we're getting nothing back except background light. As expected, the lunar regolith, with its reflectivity index, or albedo, of approximately 8%, simply scatters the beam, and the sensors back here at the observatory detect no reflected light. Now I'm going to move to Apollo 15. <laughs> Apollo 15, crewed by Scott, Irwin, and Warden, set down at the base of the lunar Apennine Mountains which is where they placed the retro reflector. Wow. That's the location where Apollo 15 landed on the moon. That is so cool. Initiating laser on retro reflector from Apollo 15. And there's a spike beginning to stand out. Is that it? That's the return from Apollo 15. Light returning from the laser retro reflector at exactly the wavelength and distance that we were expecting. <laughs> that is so cool. I know you do this like a hundred times a year, but it's really thrilling to watch it happen in, in right in front of us. Not just thrilling, but conclusive. Look, I'd love to go to the moon, but I can't. At least not right now. So we did the next best thing. We shined that laser at the moon on the second test, and we got a clear spike back. Photons came back to our receptor. Now the only way that that could happen is if there was a piece of man-made equipment up on the moon to reflect them back. So get over it. There's no conspiracy here. We've been there. We've done that. If it is impossible to mount lasers off the moon's bare surface, as the Mythbusters and other propagandists have alleged, how could LRO's laser altimeter possibly function? Why would NASA even install it if they knew the moon's surface wouldn't reflect any lasers back? Of course, we already knew that you could bounce lasers off the moon without any reflectors. As we learned from Thomas Molloy's article, The Laser's Bright Magic, printed in the December 1966 issue of National Geographic, Four years ago, a ruby laser considerably smaller than those now available shot a series of pulses at the moon, 240,000 miles away. The beams illuminated a spot less than two miles in diameter and were reflected back to Earth with enough strength to be measured by ultra-sensitive electronic equipment. We also established that the Soviet Union also managed to bounce lasers off the moon and back to Earth without a retroreflector. This is documented in the November 5th, 1963 printing of the New York Times. A concentrated beam of light has been bounced off the moon and detected on Earth by a Soviet observatory in Crimea. The feat, reported today by TAS, the Soviet press agency, duplicates an experiment conducted late last year by engineers of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The superintensive beam was produced by a laser, a device that amplifies and focuses light. The principle is believed to have potential use in space communications and long-distance energy transmission. 
The Soviet announcement said that a laser had been installed at the focal point of the 100-inch reflector telescope at the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory. Once again, far from proving NASA's past moon missions were real, LRO has effectively shot NASA in the foot. This time by discrediting what is considered by many to be one of the strongest pieces of evidence that men went to the moon. Here are some clips from some of NASA's promotional videos discussing how LRO's laser works. One of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's primary objectives is to scout safe landing sites for future manned and robotic missions to the moon. To do so, LRO's suite of instruments work collectively to build a detailed picture of the surface. Let's take a look at how this is done. The first thing we want to assess is the topography of the lunar terrain. LRO uses an instrument called LOLA that bounces laser pulses off of the surface. When the pulses return to LOLA, their timing, intensity, and spread reveal the lunar landscape. The resulting map shows steep slopes, rough terrain, and gives a general idea of what areas might be level enough to provide safe landing sites, shown here in green. LRO will have a laser system that will give us a high-resolution topographic map of the moon. The laser, which gives us measurements of the distance from the spacecraft to the surface by what's called laser altimetry. The laser bounces light off the surface of the moon and measures the amount of time for the round trip and reflected light to get back. Scientists will use data from this laser altimeter, called LOLA, to create a high-resolution topographical map of the moon's surface. The LRO's laser instrument, in addition to the experiments conducted by MIT and the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory, long predating Apollo 11, prove that you don't need a reflector to bounce lasers off the moon. Of course, the propagandists have long since switched horses. They now claim you can bounce a laser off the moon, but not to the same degree of accuracy as with a reflector. But curiously, their source material also says that the unmanned Russian reflectors offer the same degree of accuracy as the reflectors left by the Apollo astronauts. We measured the retro reflector arrays left on the moon by the Apollo astronauts and by an unmanned Soviet rover carrying a French-built reflector. We would never have any hope of measuring the lunar distance to millimeter precision without these well-defined reflectors. So, if the Soviet reflectors and American reflectors reflect these lasers to the same degree of accuracy, how do we know whether or not the Apollo reflectors were left by unmanned probes? I asked one of the pro NASA guys this on YouTube, and his exact response was, I never said the retro reflectors proved manned missions. Finally, something we agree on. 